So it's the second week of July and I wanted to give you a mid-season garden update that I showed you how to build in my previous video. The weather is about to rain, so I'm gonna hustle, but um, we've just had weird weather this entire season. It was really cold to start with and then it got super hot and now we're finally getting some rain after a lot of dry, so things are kind of weird in the garden, but let me show you everything that I've got. So I finally got my bush beans to come up. It took me, I think I sowed beans, seeds, four, maybe five times, and it was finally successful after I put some, sprinkled some inoculant over the bean seeds and some more pea seeds that I started. But these are all bush beans. Along this edge, I planted scarlet emperor running beans. Here you can see some teeny tiny little beans coming in. Potato bag. And that one is actually doing really well. The melons that I planted in all my tomato bags didn't do anything. French purple beans. You can kind of see those here. There's a blue kale, purple kale. I've got some cabbage in here, which I have never grown. I have no idea if they're gonna be successful because I did have flea beetles pretty bad. And I'd had a short video where I showed the organic control for that, which are these sticky traps. So you can go to my channel page and go to my list of videos and you'll find all of my shorts there. I don't think you can find them any other way except for going to the entire list of videos that I have. Anyway, the cabbage is huge. It's taking up the entire bed, practically. There were some broccoli and cauliflower in here and I had a couple of broccoli rob plants. They bolted right away because we got that hot weather, so I never got to have any of those. So let's go down the center of the garden. This is the cabbage and lettuce bed again. And by the way, each bed is going to be rotated. So all of these, the brassicas and lettuces and spinach will be in that bed next year. And then everything else will slide because you want to rotate crops so that you don't keep um, disease in the same beds. I bought four, a four pack of mixed lettuces at the nursery because my lettuces I started from seed weren't coming around very fast. So I got impatient. And these have given me a lot of salads for lunches and dinners, so that, that was nice. I have a tarragon plant here that I purchased at the nursery. There's a thyme plant in there that I started from seed. The cabbage I started from seed, the beans I planted directly in the ground, the basil in that first bed we looked at, the basil and oregano I had to purchase because mine weren't doing well. The spinach that was in between the cabbage before it grew up was overtaken by leaf miners. I'd pinch off the leaves to get rid of them because they had leaf miners on them and uh, barely had maybe a dozen leaves for salads because of the leaf miners. Here is a purple cabbage and that I grew from seed in a mix of microgreens that I was trying to grow for indoors this spring and I ended up putting it out and that's the one thing that survived. I started some cilantro from seed and I keep pinching off the shoots that are bolting so it's managed to survive. I've got Swiss chard in here that also had leaf miners but like this leaf right here, leaf miners. So I just I pinch them off and give them to my compost worms. One of these days, hopefully, I'll actually get to harvest some for myself. Here's a rosemary that I started from seed. And there's sage that finally came up from seed right here. Some lettuces that I started from seed, but they're not doing so great. 
another potato bag. I planted a red potato, a white potato, and a yellow potato, or gold potato. The third bed is my tomato and pepper bed. My peppers did not like to grow from seed. They were okay when I put them out in the ground and then it was really cold on them and they kind of got stunted and then super hot and they just didn't move. So I bought some more plants, the jalapenos, and then I, I have a few plants of purple bell peppers and mixed like Pinot Noir, different colors of uh, bell peppers that actually did come up from the seeds starts that I planted and there was a video on how I started all my seeds. If you look in the links below you'll see the video to that. But I ended up buying some bell pepper plants when I went to the nursery a couple weeks ago. While I was there I also found a, a four pack of asparagus and there were only three in there so she gave me a discount I think but I decided that I would dedicate one end of this bent bed to asparagus so those are ferning out right now. Now here are all of my tomatoes, and I grew all of these from seed. I'm very happy with how they're coming along. Some of the seedlings that I started for my tomatoes are finally just getting a little bit of height to them. There's two, two that are pretty small, and uh, the writing on my tags wore off, so it's going to be surprised as to which ones those are. I just posted a shorts video last night showing how I use a black light to, in the dark, to check for tomato hornworms. Last year I had a tomato hornworm that made pretty quick work of a bunch of green tomatoes, so I'm determined to keep on top of that and keep them out of here. I started some pretty cool different varieties of tomatoes. I'll have to dig out the seed packets. Okay, let's go down this last row here. You can see these are chest high on me and I'm 5'4", so they are doing really well. And I'm using this, um, I'm using this soft, almost, almost like foamy covered wire to string them up. And then I have put some jute tied up to the top rails of the garden cover. I tied it on one side and then the other side so the jute is in a V down the middle of the bed and then I have the soft ties going from the plant to the jute. Also in this bed I have parsley, flat leaf parsley, and there is a Greek oregano over there. And I started that indoors and it sat forever and didn't do a thing. So I think I got impatient and I started another, I just sprinkled some seeds in the middle here hoping to get something going and it looks like maybe they are taking. I'm not a huge fan of eating eggplant, but I'm going to be. Look at these tiny little purple and white striped fairy tale eggplants coming in. I did start from seed several plants. They did not do well. You can see the difference between the ones I bought at the nursery a couple weeks ago and the ones I started from seed. They just don't want to go because that cold weather got to them. Here's another potato bag. Looks like one melon of some sort lived but isn't doing much. It's raining pretty good right now. So this is my onion, carrot, fennel, radish, beet bed. I have Little Finger and Nanty's carrots, and then there's a row down here of kaleidoscope carrots that I've never grown before. There's also parsnips in one of the rows here. Here is the fennel. I also had radishes in there. I put peas along the back fence to climb up and they didn't do anything. I've got red, white, and yellow onions, leeks planted in there, and shallots. The beets, of course, were direct sown into the ground. And uh, they also had leaf miners, but not as bad. They'll be fine. And they do have some holes in them. I believe that's from grasshoppers. And then I had just picked the other day, and I believe I had a short video for that too, the peas that were along that fence. And they actually did well. And I had a nice batch of peas that would, I've still got half of the batch for 
a small handful for lunch or dinner. links below in the description box below the video to the original vertical uh, garden video that I had that explains the system of this and this is a garden tower too but it's got a compost tube in the middle going all the way down from top to bottom with compost worms in it so I put my kitchen scraps in there and then a leachate collection which I need to empty it's full of leachate which trickled down between the worms and just watering and then you can also get the compost out of the bottom for adding to plants, either pots or to your beds. But, and the thing rotates too, but I've got my watering system in there, so I don't want to rotate it right now too much. But you can change it based on what sun you want each area to get. I kind of didn't plan out my garden tower too well this spring. I was more interested in the raised bed. But I did throw some extra seeds in here, extra starts that I started indoors from seed. And uh, like in the top, and it looks very, very sparse, not very good, because like I said, I didn't plant it out very well. I have a couple of extra tomatoes in here. They will take off the hotter it gets. This is that compost tube that I put my kitchen scraps in and cuttings and trimmings from the garden. I have a couple of cabbage in here, which probably won't work because they're, they get so huge. The entire bottom row is nasturtium and there are some empty pockets because I've pulled some things, used some things out of some of the pockets, but uh, generally I'll go through when there's an empty pocket and throw lettuce seed, like these are lettuce plants. Here's some lettuce. This is an, a leftover eggplant transplant that I grew and here's another flat leaf parsley. Um, I've got empty pockets I could fill with something. Here's some thyme I started from seed. I absolutely love having thyme, fresh thyme to cut for cooking and also for drying. This looks like a marigold. Not sure if I put that there, if the birds did. This is cilantro. It's small, but it's coming around. Uh, this is one of those sticky strips for bugs, and I turned it. They're double-sided, and I've only got one side peeled off and sticky, but I turned it this way because I don't want to attract flying insects that are just going by. That doesn't seem fair. I just want to get the ones that are trying to make a home on my plants and eat them. Here's another one of those blue kale plants, which is actually behaving pretty well. They're usually huge. There's another little one in there, not doing much. Another one here. And then here's some nice, really nice Swiss chard. I need to start harvesting that, cutting it up into salads or cooking it down like greens. I pulled bok choy, which is in here. It just The bok choy was beautiful. I was busy. Here's one that's left, and it's small enough to eat, probably. Um, doesn't look too infested. I had aphids right here on one of the bok choy plants, and I it was so bad. I sprayed it with water to get most of them off, but I decided that it just needed to be pulled. I also have two raspberry patches. Uh, last year, or was it the year before, I got 64 cups of raspberries in the freezer. That's in addition to ones that I sold to co-workers for $5 a pint and used ourselves. So I got a ton of raspberries, but between winter kill and trimming back, I don't think I'm going to have anywhere, and the weather, I don't think I'm going to have anywhere near that kind of quantity this year. But they are finally starting to set some fruit that are ripening. My other patch my other patch is over there along that wood fence, you can see. I trim that one back pretty hard because that stuff sends out runners and goes everywhere. And that one doesn't seem to have too many berries on it this year either, but that's okay. The last three grow bags I have are squash, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, and geez, I forget what the other one is. But um, looks like the squash hardly, the squash 
in here did not do well. It's this big, and that was probably replanted. I also had planted corn seeds in here because I wanted to plant the three sisters, which would be beans, pole beans like this, corn that the pole beans could grow up on as a trellis, and then squash that would spill out. But it's not working out. The weather just is not cooperating. This squash is doing quite well, and I put these grow bags up against the chain link fence because then I can train them along the fence, and then I will put uh, nylon slings underneath any of the squash that do form. So this one's actually coming around, and uh, there's actually, it's, I just don't think there's going to be enough time for this corn, but the corn is finally doing something, and no beans made it in that one. I do have a pole bean that managed to survive in here. This squash is barely surviving and a teeny tiny corn. So I don't know, they're just kind of not doing much, but we'll see. I also have a few pots around. This one has two types of chamomile in it. And every day I come along and pinch off the chamomile blooms and put them in a tray to dry them for tea later and then this pot has my lemon balm did not come back nor did the spearmint but the chives did and I planted some ginger mint in here which I've never grown and I've been drying that along the fence here I have some native bee balm this is great for the leaves and the blossoms Look at that bee are great for tea Here's my dill patch, just in my flower beds, along the gravel drive. I love dill, it's so pretty. And I've been drying the, the dill weed, the fronds. And uh, if I pickle anything, I will use the seed heads. But it's there's so much of it here, I have actually been trimming off the seed heads that are beyond flowering and they're actually starting to produce seeds because I don't need that many plants coming up. My last pots, I have a lavender in here. Hasn't started flowering yet, but mm, it smells so good. And I will dry some of that and use it in teas and other things around the kitchen and bath, like bath salts. This is lemongrass in a pot that my mom gave me. I promised to show you what tomato varieties I was growing. I planted cherry tomatoes, one plant of those. These are all of my indeterminate tomatoes. Kellogg's Breakfast, Atomic Grape, Tigerella, Pink Berkeley Tie-Dye, Gold Metal, Ananas Noir, or Black Pineapple, and Oregon Spring, which are my favorite for BLTs. I haven't tried the other varieties, so we'll see how well they stack up against Oregon Spring. But Oregon Spring are beautiful and very tasty. And then for the determinant ones, I planted Black Sea Man. This guy had trouble germinating, so I don't remember if any of them survived in there. And I think that maybe is the only determinant tomato I planted. Yep, that's it. So. 
Those are the tomato varieties that I planted. And that is my midsummer garden tour. Finally feels like a garden. The weather has been hot lately and things are starting to grow finally.